blood on the streets of Bangkok. Thailand's demonstrators raising the stakes during the latest wave of mass protests to beset the country. Thankfully, this time, the blood had all been donated by the protesters for a symbolic show of determination. Just two weeks ago, tens of thousands of people had poured into Bangkok, blockading the parliament and the prime minister's residence and calling for the government's resignation. So we, we are a failing democracy, and I think the, the ultimate question that we have to address is uh, can we have a strong democracy when we have very strong traditional state? What the raids are trying to achieve down the road is to lessen the power of the forces that are close to the palace. Most of these red shirts, as they're known, come from Thailand's rural north and east and are supporters of the former Prime Minister Thaksin Shinawat. There is no more controversial figure in Thailand than Thaksin, the billionaire telecommunications mogul who went on to lead the country. He was hugely popular amongst the rural poor and is the only Prime Minister ever to serve a full term in office and be re-elected. But after months of corruption allegations and protests by the royalist yellow shirts, Taksin was finally ousted in a military coup four years ago. He is currently living in exile in Dubai, and in a recent interview with the Times of London, he reflected on his mistakes. I did politics without understanding the power structure of Thai society that much. I was very naive in that, so I stumbled. The former leader made other comments pointing to the vulnerability of Thailand's democracy and its links to royal approval. He went on to name palace insiders as being behind the coup that forced him from office. They want to get rid of me because they say I'm trying to turn Thailand into a republic and topple the monarchy. I love this one because he is not like a god, he is like a human, he loves his mother. So I, so I which one, one? One. But toppling the monarchy is unthinkable to most Thais. 28-year-old Somporn Ajampanya's earliest memories are of these photos on the walls of her family home. Even with the massive people power of the red shirt demonstrations thronging through Bangkok, Somporn is a staunch example of how Thailand's royal family dominates thought and behaviour here. I would like to say this word, I love King, that's all. You love him as much as you love your own father? Uh, it's, it's quite different. Feeling to the father is like uh, he is um, my, my, my beloved father, but for the king he is like a beloved model, beloved inspiration, beloved very godfather, something like that. Uh, Really, really. There is no denying the real, unconditional love felt for King Bumipon Aduyadet. From the humblest Thai families all the way up to the Prime Minister, Abbasit Fachachua. Uh, I think that, that is something that is uh, very hard to find anywhere in the world. It is, uh, I think, a product of over 60 years of uh, dedication and devotion to the people by His Majesty. Today, the Ajampanyas are on a rare family outing to celebrate King Bumapon's birthday. Tonight is closing ceremonies. I think I'm so lucky uh, that I can join the trip to this the closing ceremony. The 10-day event late last year drew millions of well-wishers for His Majesty, who inherited the throne back in 1946 after his older brother died from a pistol shot to the head in mysterious circumstances.
Now 82 years old, King Bumipon is the world's longest serving living monarch. But in recent years, the king's been in uncertain health and he's now been hospitalised for many months, much to the concern of an anxious public. Long live the king and all oh, then he will be a, a good health uh, to, be, uh, to be a woman love king for as long as forever. <laughs> While his likeness was everywhere, the king himself was too unwell to make it to the celebrations. And with Taksin Shinawat lurking in the shadows of Thai politics, questions are emerging over how the country will one day cope without the immensely influential monarch. It's a deep worry given Thailand has been stumbling through years of division, at least 16 constitutions, 11 coups and 27 prime ministers. When it comes to reverence for, for His Majesty the King, uh, there is no division. The outpouring of uh, emotions and uh, pure love uh, for the King has just been frankly overwhelming. With His Majesty plagued by ill health, you might expect discussion of the royal succession to be everywhere. But instead, it can't be openly discussed, not even by the finance minister, Gorn Chattakovanich. It doesn't need to be. The, 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 the issue is, is our uh, support and respect for the royal institution. Um, and the institution is robust. Uh, there are rules and regulations related to every aspect of the royal institution. There's no need to be concerned. So the institution is greater than the man? Uh, I'm just saying that the institution is robust. The reason for the careful choice of words is Thailand's strict laws of laissez majeste, which makes it illegal to insult the king, his immediate family, or even past monarchs. Anything to say about the job? Last year, Melbourne man Harry Nicolaides was sentenced to three years in jail for publishing 12 lines about a fictitious crown prince in a book that sold just seven copies. I regret that, I, I regret that my mother and my father and my family and friends are suffering. The king later pardoned Nicolaides, but at least 15 other people are currently facing charges of laissez majeste. I would almost certainly face arrest under the Les Majesté law if I went back to Thailand. Former Thailand correspondent Paul Handley now lives in Saudi Arabia. He's the author of a critically acclaimed history of the monarchy, but his book was banned in Thailand before it was even published. In a lot of ways, it's essential for a monarchy. A monarchy is based on a myth, on a story that tells people that this is why this family, this person who's not elected, who's not chosen by the people, is the king, is the leader. And they need that to justify the, the monarchy being handed down by bloodline, uh, by family line. Well, I would just point out that um, uh, other people are also protected by the law against defamation, slander, and surely we don't want a case where the monarchy would have to you know, bring charges against people because the, the, the monarchy is above all conflicts. But at this time of pivotal change in Thailand, some say the laws that protect the monarchy are stifling political debate. Less a majest charges can be filed by any ordinary citizen. I think the problem of this law is people abusing it. Karuna Boakumsri is a TV presenter who grew up in rural Thailand. As a girl, she was stunned to learn the king wasn't a heavenly being. I thought, like, you know, he's in the sky, in the cloud somewhere. And one day, just, you know, we got TV at home and he was there and said, Dad, is he just 
like driving in the car like that? And he said, yes, he's, he's in Bangkok. I said, wow. <laughs> <laughs> so I was invited to talk at the press club. So Recently, Karuna was on the board of Thailand's Foreign Correspondence Club when accusations were filed against her and eight others over a speech given at the club by a red shirt supporter and former spokesman for Taksin Shinawat. Some say the accusation was politically motivated. I think with the law itself, it should be amended to make it more like you know clear and specific and in order to protect what people shouldn't say about him and, and not for it to be abused not to be abused i think that there are people who, who can abuse it we're trying to close the uh, the loopholes that allow those uh, abuses to to take place and i can certainly tell you that uh, none of these um, charges are uh, initiated by the government for political political motivations. <laughs> Prime Minister Abhisit Vachachua came to power following the yellow shirt protests against Taksin, and today he's paying his respects to the king in hospital. Well, well I'm here to actually uh, bring the, what the, His Majesty had said on the fifth about how he would like to see the country. Uh, be stable and, and prosper. The Prime Minister insists the laws restricting discussion of the King aren't having a negative effect on the country's political processes. Look, people can have um, discussions so long as the, they do not violate the law. Um, but it's, it's uh, a culture of a society in terms of what we feel is appropriate to be discussed openly or not. The Prime Minister also denies Taksin's allegation that palace insiders had plotted to force him from power. But once again, those in power must choose their words carefully. I think there were uh, confirmations about a dinner that took place between influential people from different circles. It's not unusual. What has not been confirmed is what, 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 what was discussed. And uh, I don't believe that the, uh, you know, th that that dinner uh, actually had discussions about, you know, plotting a coup. After making those allegations, Taksin too was accused of laissez majeste and has given no further interviews despite repeated requests, including from Dateline. Taksin's Bangkok lawyer agreed to speak for him but not, as it turned out, on this topic. Does he stand by those comments? Uh, actually, this, this question is very sensitive, and I think you please ask him. The palace got very afraid of pa Taksin's power in 2004, 2005. He was becoming a rival and image to the king. That's, that's what they saw. And a number of people in the palace and people in the military saw Taksin as potentially trying to usurp the throne. Those fears are still very much alive among Thailand's ruling elite and royalist supporters. For now, the prospect of life after King Bumipon is something few Thais will contemplate. Exactly who will reign over them next has not been made clear and is rarely discussed. But the Prime Minister agreed to speak on the issue. How does the process work? Well, if there is a designated heir, um, then, uh, then that heir succeeds the throne, um, should, should time come. Um, and uh, if not, then there is a process set out in the Constitution. How do you know if there is a designated well, heir? Has that been said? Has it been... Well, there is a royal de declaration uh, in uh, bestowing the title of Crown Prince upon the, upon the Crown Prince. And so that suggests that yes. it, it is him? Yes. Discussion of the Crown Prince Maha Vajira Longhorn is also heavily circumscribed by the laws of laissez-majeste. Mm -hmm.
What we can say is the 57-year-old graduated from the Duntroon Royal Military College in Canberra and is a qualified fighter jet pilot. He's made a number of state visits to Australia over the years, including this one in 1999. Today he was honoured with a ceremonial parade. The Crown Prince has acknowledged he has problems with his image and is the subject of rumour and gossip. This is where the, the divide or the, the battle between the red and the yellow will climax. Some fear that the succession period may see powerful individuals close to the palace try to seize the advantage. You could have an attempted hijacking during succession whereby there is uncertainty as to who would take the throne. During that time, there could be potential war games be played by members of the Privy Council member of the armed forces and members of the judiciary branch. Natakorn Devakun comes from good political stock. His father was a finance minister under Taksin Shinawat. On hands to take part in the event which was presided over by... Natakorn is waiting for his chance to enter the political realm. And in the meantime, he's working on his profile at a new television station owned by Taxon's son. Natakorn doesn't expect the laissez majest law to change any time soon because of the political landscape. Your problem is that you have a particular administration right now, the Democrat Party administration, that is not in favour of making these changes because they are a political party that benefits from these abuses. Uh, so they're not going to they're going to institute changes that would lessen the punishment on less majesty. And with public support for the monarchy so strong, even opposition figures like Tax and Shinawat don't dare go far in their battle with palace insiders. If Kun Taksin was to uh, make himself to be an anti-monarchist, he would never politically survive in Thailand. So in a way, he's not an ideologue. He is a politician, and politicians will succumb to the ruling order of the day to survive. This is how, this is how it, it is. As the recent demonstrations showed, Taksin Shinawat is determined to survive, and equally determined to regain power. Some believe the political struggle could have disastrous consequences for the nation. And, uh, he won't go down by himself, he'll drag his enemies down with him and in the process Thailand down with him. Uh, he, the establishment, his opponents, should have seen him as a wake-up call. Titanan Ponsudarak is a political analyst at one of Thailand's leading universities. He says many people are now asking whether democracy is compatible with Thailand's traditional institutions. And so far the answer in our country is that no. Uh, they're not compatible. If you want to have strong democratic institutions, um, the bureaucracy, the military, the monarchy will have to adjust accordingly. And that's why they, the military and the palace, do not want to see Taksin come back. They know that when the king passes, they don't want anyone out there pow powerful enough to challenge them to stick their hand into, into what the palace and the military think is their business. <laughs> With the succession day drawing ever closer, the red tide that's just swept through Bangkok is only a hint of the growing political pressure Thailand is under. The water is just uh, piling up, right? There's no allowance for leakage, for release. So the dam gates one day are going to come under immense pressure and then we may have a the dam gate's bursting, and that's what we don't want for Thailand.